I'm Bethany Anderson, and you're listening to The Hope Adventure. This is Episode 2, Hello, Goodbye. Following God into unknown places can be really scary, daunting, and even terrifying at times. Have you ever wondered how to navigate the change of seasons or chase after a dream with a lens of hope and adventure rather than fear or analysis paralysis? Well, listen in and we'll see what we can learn together about the adventure that is following God. After all, the greatest adventure is His presence. On today's episode, we'll discover that sometimes saying yes to God requires a lot of no's to other things. Are you ready? Let's go! As a child, I remember thinking that I was different from my friends. Most of my friends came from similar home lives. We attended church together, played in our neighborhood, did all the same activities, went to the same school, and our parents and siblings were even good friends. But somehow I felt like I always stuck out. Maybe it was my array of bizarre outfits I assembled for school on a near daily basis. When I was at the end of my 8th grade year, for example, I wore one of my favorite outfits on the day we got to visit the high school for our freshman cheerleader induction. I wore Beetlejuice black and white tights, dark mid-calf combat boots, a black short sleeve shirt, and denim shorts overalls. Yeah, I got some curious stares from my fellow squad members. But the varsity cheerleaders complimented me on my, quote, creativity and confidence. Besides my leanings towards interesting fashion, I knew from a young age that there was a unique path set out in front of me. I had a deep sense that my life was never really going to look like everyone else's, and that was okay. My parents traveled quite a bit because my dad and my grandfather ran an international business. I remember my goodbye ritual with my dad when he would get ready to leave for another international jaunt. I would wait in my bedroom until my dad came into the room to say goodbye. Then I would pop up like a sizzling popcorn kernel and clasp my bony little fingers around my dad's neck. I would say, Dad, I'm a giant necklace. You have to wear me and take me with you. My threats did never last too long because eventually my fingers would slide down his neck and I would dramatically collapse on my bed. In that moment, I knew I really had to say goodbye. Though I would try to prolong this hugging game as much as possible, my dad would eventually woo me to sleep, promising me goodies and stories of adventure upon his return. And that's where it all started, in regards to two major things in my life. First, with every exotic trip my dad took, I went with him. My little girl imagination dreamed that I was seeing all these new and exciting things, and I had the international doll collection to prove that I had been places. My bedroom shelves were lined with tokens from China to Nigeria, Egypt to England, Switzerland to Australia, and Saudi Arabia to Brazil. I couldn't remember half the names of my dolls because I couldn't even pronounce them. Watching my dad travel the world taught me to crave going, even if just in my imagination at the time. Secondly, I learned to despise goodbyes. As a little girl, I invented the necklace game because as long as I could keep my dad in front of me, it meant that I didn't have to say goodbye. It meant I could keep him with me in my room. But it never failed that when I dropped from his neck and crashed to my bed, it signaled the moment I dreaded the most. That moment of goodbye. Years and a plethora of countries later, with countless friends scattered across the globe, this is still the one word I despise more than anything else in the English language. Well, except the word moist. But I really, really hate the word goodbye. I usually describe myself to people as a Jackie of all trades. I'm an Enneagram 7. I have more interests and passions than I can keep up with and a mind that is constantly racing, keeping me volleying between this task or that passion. I'm not a person who excels amazingly at one thing, but one who is mediocre at a lot of things. Someone called me a renaissance lady recently. 
I'll take it, as long as I can change out my wardrobe and wash my hair regularly. Or at least have dry shampoo. One thing I do have expertise in, though, is saying goodbye. I really don't like this about myself. I wish I was a professional surfer or that I excelled at building birdhouses or something. I don't. I'm experienced in the way of goodbyes. It comes with the territory of being a global citizen, I guess, and my case, a person who travels more than they cook. I am a closure person. I don't just want it. I need it. When I'm texting with a friend, for example, I want to be the one who sends the final text in the thread. When I'm watching a sitcom and someone exits the room, leaving the door open, it drives me crazy. I cannot handle it. I want to reach the TV and slam the door shut. I have this strange closure habit. When I'm getting ready to move away from a place, I become really present with people where I am. I realize that we should always be present with people, but this is highlighted as one of my top priorities when I'm about to change my geography. For example, when I was living in Switzerland, I would typically call my parents every Sunday night. When I was preparing to move away, though, I told them I wouldn't call them for my final weeks in Europe because I wanted to focus my time and energy there. In my mind, I was thinking, I'm about to be back in Texas with my family and have to leave my friends here, so I'm going to spend every waking moment with the people here that I won't see when I move back to Texas. Makes sense, right? Goodbyes mean leaving people, and I really hate that. I can't even handle leaving a party early, let alone leaving people halfway around the world that I love, especially when I have no idea if, when, or where I'll see them again. Even now, the thought of the well-worn road of goodbyes is paved with faces that prick my heart with sadness, though it's also blanketed by thankfulness for the intersection of our lives. I am a people person to my own detriment. I live and breathe by relationships and connectedness. When I feel disconnected, it's like my world is literally caving in. I don't handle goodbyes well, and I've definitely never done breakups well. In fact, I believe God has protected me from a string of broken romantic relationships because he knows exactly how he created me. As a person who needs closure and as one who cannot cope with severed relationships on any level. I despise goodbyes. I really do. And I have a sneaking suspicion that you do too. But here's the thing. I've learned that chasing after the god of adventure means that goodbyes come with a lifestyle. Saying yes to God sometimes means saying no to something or someone. That's hard and oftentimes painful, but it is always worth it. If I had never had the courage to leave Texas that first time back in 2003, my life wouldn't be filled by the richness of deep friendships I have with people all over the world today. Sometimes it takes leaving to gain more than you ever thought possible. One of my favorite quotes by Andre Gide says, Man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. It's true. Letting go, leaving, moving on, saying goodbye. All of these things can be painful, but we never know what we are missing, what God has in store for us and others, when we grasp so tightly to the things we know and love with an unwillingness to let go. Leo, a dear South African friend and brother of mine, always prayed with his palms open. When I asked him why he did this, he told me, Bethany, you can't receive from God when your hands are already closed. I love this picture. I can't receive the fullness of what God has to offer for my life and the lives of others until I have the courage to say goodbye when he's asking me to do so. I can fight it, avoid it, clench my fists, close my palms, but I will miss out on the adventure of life and love that he has before me. So, what goodbye are you facing today? Is it time to leave a job? Is it time to exit a relationship? Maybe you need to say goodbye to a habit that's been stealing your joy. Maybe you need to say sayonara apathy, adios confusion, au revoir doubt, ciao fear. 
Maybe you need to quit something today that's been toxic for your progress towards the goals, dreams, and ambitions you have for your life. What is it? What is that thing? I'll be honest with you. I still hate goodbyes. But here's my resolve, and perhaps you want to join me in this. I will say hello to goodbyes for the sake of God and for the sake of the richness that I will behold on the other side when he connects me to people in that place. I will say hello to goodbyes because sometimes it is in saying goodbye to one thing, person, or job that you find yourself smack dab in the center of God's will a place where you can run freely into all that he has for you with open hands. So, what do you say? Shall we do this together? On the count of three. One, two, three. Hello, goodbye. And now, let's pray together. God, thank you that you are the God that orchestrates and that you love us wherever we are. And God, we trust that when you call us to those hard moments of goodbye, it is for a greater purpose. And that on the other side of that pain, there is joy. And there is a story that points back to your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives So would you give us the courage today to be bold, to take a risk, to take that leap, to say yes to you, and goodbye to the things that you're asking us to say goodbye to. We love you. We trust you. Help us do this. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode of The Hope Adventure. You can find more stories from my adventures at jbethanyanderson.com or by reading my book, which is called Kiss My Fish, Tales of Chasing God Around the World, which you can find on Amazon in both paperback and ebook formats. Also, if you like what we've talked about today, leave a rating and a review on iTunes and share The Hope Adventure with your friends. Think of somebody who wants to be a world changer and who wants to go on adventure with God and share it with them. And lastly, don't forget to tune in next week because we're going to share another adventure together. And remember, let's breathe, then say it together. Hello, goodbye. See you next week. Today's music has been brought to you by the Blue Dot Sessions.